My guest is Candace Cameron Bure. Well, she became very famous for her role as DJ in the hit series Full House until the series ended in 1995. To this day, the show continues to be a hit, still airing in over a hundred countries around the world. Fantastic. Now, in the midst of child stardom, Candace Cameron found her faith in Jesus Christ. Welcome with me, Candace Cameron Bure. Well, you are a remarkable story. To begin with, you know, uh, why do you think your program has been so successful? My grandchildren love you. They're Thank watching you. you. I think because it held good, wholesome family values. And especially today, there aren't that many shows on, that new shows that hold those values. And I think it, it will be one of those never-ending television shows as long as people are having children and want something good to watch. I had great applause. <laughs> yeah, that's Thank you. Uh, well, you grew up uh, as a child, and uh, so many kids that grew up in Hollywood. I've been around here 53 years. I mean, I knew all the old ones, like John Wayne, Lucille Ball. You never heard of them, but they're, they were very big in their time. Yes. But I don't know the young girls and the young guys, but so many of child stars, what happened to them? Well, we hear all the stories. A lot of them get mixed up in drugs and alcohol, and, and they ha are given so much at such a young age that they kind of don't know what to do with themselves, and they go for it all. And I kind of led just the opposite life. I started going to church when I was 12 years old, and I was raised in a very moral family a good family, but not necessarily Christian family. Uh, but I did know who Jesus was at 12, and I had given my life over to him. But through my teenage years, God became less and less important to me. The longer I was on the show and doing things, it, there were just other things that were more important to me. And it wasn't until I had children of my own that I started questioning God again and, and who he was and how I wanted to raise my children. And what I realized was that because I had led such a good life and a moral life, I didn't see my need for God. I thought I was doing it very well on my own. And it wasn't until I was shown the Ten Commandments and through the mirror of the Ten Commandments reflected the sin in my heart. I thought I was so good because I wasn't doing drugs or uh, an alcoholic. So I thought the little sin that I was doing in my life wasn't anything compared to the big sin that other people were doing. And that I was using God's forgiveness as a license to live my life the way I wanted to. And when I saw the filth in my own heart and realized that God holds a higher moral standard than the world does, I saw my need for him. I saw my need for Christ. And it was at that point, through the gratitude of what Christ did on the cross for me, did I want to live a life that was pleasing for him. I wanted to walk the walk and uh, live my life every day for him. As long as I'm faithful to engage in a relationship with him, he never leaves. It's always me if something <laughs> fades. But he's been so wonderful. My husband was not a believer uh, when we got married. And when I had this passion and fire, when it all came together for me, there was nothing I wanted more than to share this with my husband and for him to know Christ the way I now knew him. But in my enthusiasm, uh, I kept talking about God and talking and talking and talking. My, my husband finally looked at me one day and he said, Candace, it's great. I understand that you're trying to have me or get me to a place where you are with your relationship with God, but you are turning me off you're preaching at me, and you're making me take two steps back. Wow. And I had, I had no idea I was doing that, and I, it was the last thing I wanted to do. And I went into my bedroom, and I knew that there was a verse in the Bible. I knew that there was a promise. And I found 1 Peter 3 and 1 that said, Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, and that even if they do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives. 
So it was at this point where I said, Lord, I can do this. I can show him who you are without my speaking a word. I can show him through my conduct. And I prayed faithfully for my husband's salvation uh, from that day forward and prayed that he would one day be the spiritual leader of our household. And I uh, just, at that time, walked a walk to be a godly wife and an excellent wife and a wonderful mother to my children and I started working on me and having God show me where I needed to go that would eventually lead my husband to Christ and I'm so blessed and thankful to say that two years after that day my husband did give his life to the Lord loves the Lord and is a believer and you know God holds his promises we don't know what the timing is always might be a lot longer than that but he is faithful to keep his promises You will be fantastic in your faith. I'm praying for you now as I'm looking into those two eyes that are swimming in a beautiful, shallow pool of happy love water. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.